Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with the Realism Overhaul set of mods and I am going to describe the contents of the new EDB Real Spacecraft Pack version 0.6.1. So I've collected all my probes and spacecraft into a single zip file. I'm going to tell you what's in it and all the little caveats, well most of the little caveats that I have when it comes to these parts. Uh, so let's get started. The first thing is the BE-7. So I'm just going to go in folder order. There are 16 folders in the zip file. You can delete any of the folders uh, depending on what parts you want. So the first folder is the BE-7, which is just this one engine. And the reason it's in its own separate folder is because it can be used on the Blue Moon, but it can also be used on the Blue Origin National Team uh, version of the Lunar Lander. So uh, it's used for both of those things, and it was best to keep it separate. So it's just, it's just a Hydrolox engine, uh, very simple. Uh, you can see the stats there. There's presumed stats. I don't know the exact numbers, but it seem, it'll end up pretty close to this. So uh, 10 ignitions, and it is used as a lander engine, so it can throttle. All right, so next up is Bepi Colombo. So to find those parts, you should type in Bepi, and we should probably find it. Of course, now, since I made these parts, Kerbal Space Program has a Bepi Colombo, so these are a little bit old though. And my mods have varying quality, I guess you could say, because I've been learning Blender along the way. So sorry about that, it's not all uniform in quality. So first of all is Mio, which is the Japanese probe, and then there's a Sun Shield. Oops, let me push Alt to connect that. And uh, the Mio probe has a decoupler on it, so it should be able to go off. So there's a sun shield to separate itself off from the planetary orbiter, which is like that. And then the transfer module, uh, which is like that. They are staggered like this. The wide end of the, uh, at least in the images I've seen, the wide end of the planetary orbiter is opposite the wide end of the transfer module. Uh, so the transfer module has ion engines built in. It's got xenon gas and all that business. It's got, you know, the normal realism overhaul negligible throttle for ion engines. So we can't even see the thrust there. But there you have it. I, uh, I didn't include the solar panels on here, but I had modified the stock solar panels. But I think you should probably just find better solar panels. So I tried here. This is one of the earlier experiments. Uh, this is actually photo a photo place there. The Mio textures are actually also a photo. So anyway, but you get the picture. Probably superseded by more recent things. Next up is Blue Moon. So again, uh, this is a pretty big mod pack. So if you don't want some of the parts, you can just delete the folder in the parts folder. And if you're not using with Realism Overhaul, you can try to delete the Realism Overhaul Configs folder, which is outside the Parts folder. Uh, all the Realism Overhaul Configs are in there, but it's not really meant for without Realism Overhaul. Anyway, Blue Moon, there are two parts. There's this lander stage, and then there's one with Hydrolox RCS. The lander stage itself uses uh, hydrogen gas RCS and it can produce the hydrogen gas by boil off. So watch out for that. To make it simpler, I made this Hydrolox RCS version and Hydrolox RCS just uses the regular fuel instead of hydrogen gas so you don't have to wait for the boil off to use the RCS or anything. Oops, sorry for the clipping. Uh, same model uh, here, raise gear, it's like that. Very simple. Uh, the real thing I found out later uses methane and oxygen RCS. I think there might be a shader problem on this, I'm not sure. It's tough for me to decide from the look of it right now. But anyway, so that was the original Blue Moon um, proposal from Blue Origin. And so that's in a folder all on its own. And then there's a Blue Origin folder. And the Blue Origin folder actually contains some of these uh, these ILV parts, so basically it, so I'll just use them. So this is the Lunar Lander from Blue Origin slash National Team. Uh, you can e most easily find it by typing in ILV. And so this is the Lunar Cabin. And then this is the Ascent Stage. 
looking spiffy. This is one of the more recent models that I've made, and so it looks better. <laughs> Uh, uh, the Ascent engine goes like that. Um, the Ascent engine is based on the AJ10-190. And uh, then we have a descent stage. And this uh, is sort of has a thing that goes inside like that. So place it like that. And if you, uh, when you need the engines at the bottom, you need the BE-7. So now I made the landing legs a little bit too wide, I think. And so uh, they, they can retract like this. And there's supposed to be another transfer stage at the bottom that I did not model. Uh, you could probably make that with procedural parts. And that uses a single BE-7 engine for the transfer. I, But this barely fits into a 7 meter fairing with the legs like this. So uh, my faux pas there. Uh, it might be a little bit too big overall. I didn't get solid dimensions. I used estimates that people were tossing about in NASA, on NASA Space Flight dot com so i read a forum thread and judged from that as best i could but even the artist impressions were inconsistent unfortunately uh earlier on the blue origin lander looked a little bit different the top part was more of a longish tank more like the dynetics one but they've changed that recently so this is what it looks like right now the top of it can accommodate any normal docking port so uh it was scaled mainly to uh, the docking port sizes so that we could make sure that the docking ports could fit and especially the NASA docking system you'll have to tuck it in a bit though it's own, uh, this this wide portion isn't supposed to be there uh, it's only really like that top portion that that's about the diameter of the real NASA docking system okay so that is that that's in the blue origin folder next up Chandrayaan 2 so probably just Chandra will do. And this is an older model, so not quite as good. So we've got the lander. I didn't model the rover, unfortunately. Uh, so you'll have to do that. There's the lander. There's a ramp. And this you can deploy. Oh, you know what? I might have a shader problem on here looking at the ramp there. Those two panels should be the same color. Bottom looks right, though. Uh, but this, yeah. Uh, so I might have to do, there might be a uh, point, uh, 0 0.6.2 coming up soon. Anyway, uh, the Chandrayaan engines, there are five of them. They go like this. And you have to put this center one inside a bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, probably I put the orbiter at the bottom to occupy the node and then put the engine <laughs> uh, that's a bit weird, but um, it worked. So it's finicky like that, trying to put the engine there. All right, so there we have that. The, it's got a ramp, and this part has the extendable solar panel, and, and that's just on one side. It's got radiators on the other sides here and antenna. And uh, you should put one of the Chandrayaan engines down here as well. Oop. Okay, so next up we have Dragon 2, and originally I made this version with the heat shield built in, and but it has a flaw when we take a look at the nose cone. It doesn't have the forward-facing RCS thrusters, so I made a newer version with the heat shield not built in, so no heat shield. There's a flat bottom, and then the heat shield is a separate part, like so, and then there's also, of course, a trunk, uh, like so, and... Yeah, uh, I endeavored to just use a photo for getting the look of the trunk, but I'm not really satisfied with my trunk. But anyway, uh, we do have the forward-facing thrusters there. And so, yeah, the cabin, it's not very detailed, so don't expect too much. It does have a custom cabin inside, though. So that's Dragon 2. Those are those parts. Then the Dynetic Lunar Lander. Dynetics. Uh, so we have the lunar cabin, and again, the top of it is sized to accommodate a regular docking port. And then we have the structure, hold alt, and this has all eight engines built in. I know that the outer engines, I think, shut off, or was it the inner engines that shut off? Anyway, um, half of the engines shut off while landing, but we can't do that 
as such when all eight engines are built in I'd have to separate off the engines I can separate off the engines but I haven't done that yet so but so you'll just have to throttle down and you can and the landing legs look like that not the most stable-ish thing ever uh, but yeah hopefully it'll work out and then there are also drop tanks the drop tanks come with a decoupler so they can decouple themselves I believe they are attached after it arrives on the moon so they're sent separately because otherwise I can't figure out how to put the dynamics lander in a bay when they look like this I mean uh, you, you could shift them down and put them there uh, but that's not how the images have it so that's up to you uh, that's just a Perios booster and I guess that's something else anyway so these are the parts very simple I think I just used a stock cabin for that Next up, Insight. So Mars Insight. Um, this is actually not my model. This is NASA's model, and I just modified it. The textures were a mess. Um, <laughs> uh, NASA did not make it easy on me. It's got the thrusters built in. It has hydrazine built in. I, I think it still should be like this. The shell has a shader issue, but I'm not sure. This is all made by NASA. I did not do this. Don't blame me. <laughs> I just imported it, okay? So there might be other issues, but there's the heat shield and there's the cruise instruments like that. And yeah, I think that's all of it. And the the solar panels deploy like that. Okay? So that is insight and you'll, you'll place this ultimately upside down like that. Uh, note that I did not put landing legs on it or the solar panels. So it's just the body and you're going to have to add your own solar panels and your own landing legs. But yeah, hopefully the quality of the model from NASA justifies making that effort. I'll probably fix the textures someday. Okay, so that's InSight. Next up, I have one ISS mod, uh, module that I made, and that's the exposed facility, because I didn't find a good version of that. This is also NASA's model of it, so I just imported the NASA model. So LeaseSat is a satellite that was on the shuttle during the STS-51A mission, and it's got little engines there you have to uh, those are apogee kick motor engines and then you have to put a uh, SRB in to uh, get it up to GTO basically and it has extendable antennae like that okay, let me get rid of those so it's like this and it goes in the shuttle bay and uh, yeah you have to put an extra SRB on but that's it it's just one of those satellites that the shuttle launched I don't know if I need to fix the shader on it or not. I can't tell very well. It really had these really dark solar panels, so. But uh, Textures Unlimited could probably make it shinier. Okay, so that's least set. And then the Lunar Gateway modules that I made, I didn't make all of them. So we have a couple of versions of this, a small version and a large version. So there's a four meter and then there's the standard. I'm just gonna go with the standard one. Uh, we have the Halo module, which is a habitat module. And then we have, that's uh, not yet, uh, the Halo antennae. We'll go with the standard version. There's an invisible uh, attachment node inside the body that those go on, and those can extend. Okay. And then, of course, positions for the docking ports. And then we have the PPE module down here. They are currently slated to launch together. The solar panels that you put on will be on the broad sides, these two, and then uh, there is the advanced electric propulsion systems. There's two of those down here. So you need enough uh, solar panel read to feed the two ion engines here. And there's an extra mounting point here if you want to attach something else like a transfer stage. So there is that. And the xenon gas is as they said it should be five tons worth and that'll give you enough power for three years 160 days so it's up to you um, good luck uh, 12,000 meters per second for station keeping and all the rest and maybe eventually getting into position oh and uh, there's also the PPE antennae node 
the stems uh, where the collider is. Uh, there we go. So the PPE antennae are like that. They're probably different instead of having four of the same antennae, but yeah. Okay, so that is the Lunar Gateway. Next up, Marco. Marco was the, uh, one of the little CubeSats that were sent to Mars along with InSight. And so we have the Marco bus. This might be a little bit hard to see because it is a CubeSat. And this is the Marco antenna, the main antenna. And that does go on that side and extend. I think it's supposed to be flipped around. This is where, uh, there are little thrusters on the back here. Very little thrusters. And I think it should be like that. Okay, so that's the antenna, and I used a photo of the probe to get that. And there's also the UHF antenna down here. Do I have that rotated right? I think so. And so UHF antenna extends like that. Okay, so that's a Marco sat. Oh, and uh, it has solar panels, of course. Forgot to show it has the solar panels. Don't know if they point in the right direction, but it has them. So there we go. It's got a tiny bit of nitrogen for its little thrusters. Okay, next Osiris-Rex. So this is just the Osiris-Rex body. And there's a recovery capsule. This I did model. Though there is a version of it from NASA as well. And then solar panels. It's got built-in thrusters and everything. So RCS, all hydrazine stuff. Oh, and uh, the arm, unfortunately, I just stuck on here. So when the solar panels deploy, the arm automatically deploys. Just one animation. Um, not the ideal thing, but she was simpler. Uh, trying to make a robotic part for the arm would have been more complicated. But anyway, that's Osiris Rex as I had it. Next up, Perseverance. So, with the Perseverance rover, in my typical fashion, I left things off, and in this case, it's the wheels. And so, no wheels on here. It does have extendable instruments, like so, which we will tuck in. Now, because I didn't put the wheels on, and it would have been impossible to make the animation to have the wheels folding up. See, if you have an animated part, and then you attach another part to it, the part attached to it doesn't go along with the animation. So I couldn't have it fold up the wheel stuff the way it really does. So we have to make the shell a little bit bigger. And um, that is not actually the node that we need for that. First we need the sky crane. And the wheels would have to be separate parts anyway because you can't have more than one wheel module on the same part. So each wheel has to be separate. Uh, there has to be a decoupler between the sky crane and the rover, and I did not make that decoupler, so you just put a procedural decoupler there. But it goes roughly like that, and once you put the decoupler, this camera should not be clipping into the sky crane anymore. And then we put the shell like that, and then the heat shield like that, and then the cruise stage. And of course you have to put parachutes on the on the shell. And so the shell has a collider. Uh, you have to place real shoots or whatever you choose to use on that. But the uh, Sky Crane's thrusters can be used through the shell. They have holes in the shell for that. So those are the parts for Perseverance. Oh, and the Perseverance rover itself was a NASA model. The rest of it I made. Okay tub style sat. This is another shuttle launch satellite. It's based on the Delta II form factor and it's uh, it, you'll have to put motors inside here. It's got RCS but it needs two motors uh, to get it to GTO which is where it goes and it extends like that. It's sort of fancy so that's how it looks when fully extended so that's like the antenna just how it is and so this was deployed unsuccessfully on STS-41B and rescued by STS-51A. This is one of those. And yeah, so that's it. Those are the parts in the EDB Mods Real Spacecraft Pack. And yeah, 
uh, collected all together for the first time. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.